As you gaze at the weathered Martian landscape in photographs, you might initially perceive Mars as a serene and desolate place. Vast, flat, dusty terrains seem to stretch endlessly, with only sporadic rocks and the faint whisper of the wind to break the pervasive solitude. However, if you spend some time on this rust-hued world, you'll soon witness a colossal dust and sandstorm brewing on the horizon. You might compare it to storms on Earth, not realizing that this storm is on the verge of growing so massive that it will engulf not just a region or a continent, but the entire planet. These all-encompassing superstorms occur on Mars roughly every three Martian years, equivalent to about 5.5 Earth years. Their dense dust shrouds can block sunlight for weeks or even months, posing significant challenges to the functionality of any technology we deploy there. If humans ever hope to establish a presence on the Red Planet, these storms present a formidable obstacle. Compounding the issue is our limited understanding of the origins, characteristics, mechanisms, and impacts of Martian superdust storms, as well as the precautions humans would need to take to weather them. For more mind-blowing space discoveries and cosmic adventures, don't forget to subscribe to Cosmic Discovery and join us on this extraordinary journey through the universe. Mars didn't always contend with planet-scale dust storms. Once, it had a thick atmosphere capable of supporting liquid water. Over billions of years, Mars dried up and its atmosphere gradually eroded until it comprised less than 1% of Earth's atmospheric volume. However, these dust storms didn't become prevalent solely because Mars became arid. While there is still much we don't comprehend about these storms' origins, we suspect that a crucial factor is Mars's temperature. With its thin atmosphere and high CO2 levels, Mars lost its ability to retain heat effectively. When the surface cools, there's no atmosphere to trap the escaping warmth. This results in dramatic temperature fluctuations on Mars, ranging from daytime highs of around 27 degrees C to nighttime lows of a bone-chilling minus 133 degrees Celsius. These temperature disparities induce winds that can drive various weather systems across the planet. Mars's arid climate no longer relies on rain and water cycles, but rather on dust cycles. Dust plays a surprisingly pivotal role on Mars, and without it, these planet-spanning storms might never form. Although Mars's atmosphere is too thin to capture and transport heat efficiently, the Martian dust is another story. It all begins with Martian dust entering the atmosphere through various mechanisms. One such mechanism involves dust devils, with thousands occurring on Mars annually, particularly during the Martian spring and summer. The sun's warm rays heat the surface, causing the adjacent air to rise and drawing cooler atmospheric air downward to fill the void. These contrasting winds create ascending spirals of air that can extend for hundreds of meters in width and reach heights of up to 8.5 kilometers, though many are smaller. As these spirals meander across Mars's extensive deserts, they pick up dust, propelling it into the atmosphere and leaving a haze in their wake. This process contributes to a continuous presence of background dust in Mars's atmosphere. However, the most common way dust enters the atmosphere is through the influence of wind moving across Mars's dusty surface, a process known as saltation. Martian dust, composed of small particles with slight electrostatic properties, tends to stick together, making it challenging to get airborne. Larger sand grains, surprisingly, are easier for the wind to set in motion due to their reduced cohesion. While they are carried short distances by gusts of wind, their weight eventually causes them to descend. The force generated by these small impacts imparts enough momentum to overcome cohesion and lift the lighter dust into the air. Once aloft, the lower gravity on Mars allows the dust to remain in the atmosphere for weeks or even months providing the foundation for storm formation. Dust particles, unlike the thin air around them, are proficient at absorbing heat from the sun. As the sun warms dust in the atmosphere, they act as miniature radiators, 
gradually releasing accumulated heat into the surrounding air. This results in significantly warmer air nearby. This warm air ascends on a larger scale than the dust devils, drawing in wind from the sides of the rising air mass and intensifying the process. More wind begets more saltation, more dust entering the atmosphere, and more opportunities for the air to heat up. Ultimately, this escalating cycle leads to the formation of regional dust storms. On a local scale, these dust storms are not particularly perilous. Wind speeds reach a maximum of 97 kilometers per hour, only half the velocity of Earth's hurricane winds. Moreover, due to the thin Martian atmosphere, even at such speeds, you wouldn't feel much impact, akin to how an individual has less force compared to a crowd. Contrary to depictions in some science fiction stories, these dust storms lack the power to topple spacecraft or damage satellite dishes. Nevertheless, they bring their own set of risks. Martian rovers reliant on solar power are vulnerable to dust storms laden with slightly adhesive electrostatic particles. Gradually, the dust deposited by such storms can obstruct sunlight from reaching the rover's solar panels, resulting in the cessation of its mission. As these storms grow in scale, the problems intensify. Mars follows an elliptical orbit and each Martian year, during the Southern Hemisphere's spring and summer, the planet comes closest to the Sun and experiences its warmest conditions. For reasons not yet fully understood, regional dust storms tend to merge into superstorms approximately the size of a continent. Although it may seem coincidental, these occurrences are so regular, happening annually when temperatures rise, that mere chance seems an insufficient explanation. Beyond these continent-sized storms are the enigmatic planet-sized storms, which manifest once every three Martian years, approximately every 5.5 Earth years. Perhaps there is an aspect of the dust cycle that necessitates a replenishment period, taking three Martian years or roughly 5.5 Earth years to do so. While most dust storms on Mars endure only a few days, these apex storms can persist for several weeks. The impact of these storms on any human technology on Mars can be profound. Scientists gauge the availability of sunlight on Mars using aerosol optical depth AOD, to measure how much sunlight is absorbed or reflected by airborne pollutants. The AOD on Mars typically hovers around 0.5. To provide context, an AOD of less than 2 is required for rovers like Opportunity or landers like InSight to charge their onboard batteries. A thick wildfire-induced smoke on Earth that darkens the day registers an AOD of 7. These planet-sized dust storms, however, result in AOD values of 9 to 11, signifying nearly complete light blockage. In 2018, a storm of this magnitude led to the demise of the Opportunity rover, as its solar panels were engulfed by dust, forcing it into hibernation mode. Deprived of power for its onboard heaters, the rover succumbed to the extreme day-night temperature fluctuations. These storms pose a challenge for other rovers, including those with nuclear batteries like Curiosity, as the dense clouds impede communication with the Earth, necessitating a waiting period. Satellites orbiting Mars can also be affected by these storms. The considerable warming of the atmosphere due to copious dust causes it to expand, placing some of it within the orbital paths of satellites. These satellites must expend precious fuel for course corrections, ensuring they don't descend from the Martian sky due to atmospheric drag. If humans aspire to settle on Mars, they must find ways to surmount these challenges. Settlements powered by solar energy would be at risk during such storms unless alternative power sources are available, considering the frigid temperatures. The loss of satellite communication during these storms would leave settlers isolated and vulnerable. Consequently, humans would need to be self-reliant, as there would be no means of calling for assistance in case of emergencies. Over time, these superstorms prove to be self-destructive. The extensive light blockage eventually results in insufficient warming of the surface to generate the upwelling winds that lift dust into the atmosphere. Without this source of rising dust, 
the storms gradually wane and tranquility returns to the Red Planet. Surviving rovers can exit hibernation mode and resume their scientific activities once communication with Earth is restored. As of 2023, there are three active rovers on Mars, NASA's Curiosity and Perseverance and China's Zhurong. Among them, Zhurong relies on solar panels for power, and it will need to exercise caution as the next superstorm may be approaching soon. When a gentle breeze begins stirring and dust starts to swirl, the cycle commences anew.